I'm State Senator Cameron Bartolotta, and I represent Greene County, almost all of Washington County, and parts of Beaver County. And I am here today with a wonderful individual, and we are going to be discussing the benefits of my upcoming legislation, hopefully upcoming, Senate Bill 25, which allows nurse practitioners full autonomy. And this is an incredible example as to why it is so vital. And nurse practitioner, Ms. Lynn Hurd is with us, Nurse of the Year. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about that, if you would, Lynn. I did receive the award. I was actually school nurse excellence for the state of Pennsylvania and I was recognized nationally. So I appreciate you for acknowledging that. In 1995, I went back for my nurse practitioner. And um, so I actually served in two roles. I worked in a family practice for many years, 20, over 20 years. And I also worked in a school setting as a, as a nurse. I've been in school nursing for 25 years. And, you know, the, a lot of the the students that I see at the school, I would also see in the office and I would see their families. So I got to know, you know, entire families and it, it was just so rewarding for me. And I think it was very special for them. And I just hope that we can, can continue that at some point. Well, Lynn, what is it that people can do to help you fulfill this, this need uh, uh, by, by moving forward and, and actually doing what you do best? What can, what can we get people to do to help get the, the legislature to pass Senate Bill 25? You know, I <laughs> wish I had a magic wand and, and could say, you know, I just hope that senators and representatives can certainly understand the value to the patients. It's really giving the patients another choice. It's giving them the choice to receive health care from the person that they feel most comfortable with. So I, I hope that, you know, they can see that, they can understand that, and we can continue to provide quality health care in Pennsylvania. Because right now, there's a lot of patients that are not getting that quality health care. I know in our community, we just had another office. We only had two physician offices. One closed that I was in, and that's when I was left without a job. Now the second one is closing. So in our community, there's no, there's one provider office and it is another nurse practitioner that has a collaborative agreement. So there are no, these elderly people don't wanna to have to drive 20 miles to, to find another provider. If they can find one at all. Right. And right. if they can get an appointment at all, because there's a lot of these doctors, you just said you're, the second physician's office is closing in your community. Why do you think that is? Do you, do you have any idea why they're closing up? They're just retiring or? No, they were part of a corporation and the corporation, I guess, felt that healthcare, they, it was not lucrative or I'm not understanding why they're closing because it was a busy practice. Because when I closed, I sent the patient's to them. So there's a lot of patients that feel like they're in limbo now. Where are they supposed yeah. to go? And right. to your point exactly, a lot of these folks are elderly and they don't drive. Many people oh. don't drive. They don't have they don't have transportation and they're supposed to find a re relative or a friend or some sort of a car service. And right. you know, I, have one lady, yeah. I have one patient that was 91 years old and she lives um, probably about three miles and it's a back road. And she said, I can make it to your office, you know? And she said, I can't make it to, you know, to another office, it's too far. Right, exactly. That's just tough. And, and it's, it's very disappointing to a lot of these individuals who are up in, you know, geriatric and older and they rely on this comforting and trusting relationship that they have built with people just like you, Lynn over years and years and years and to make it harder and harder for them to receive the good health care that they need is really a disservice when all we need to do is act like 23 other states and dc and and the va and provide good health care so your story is not unique but it is it's heartbreaking to, to hear the struggles that you're going through just to try to do the right thing for people you know i mean we have so many nurses now we've got phenomenal uh, places of, of, of to educate all of these wonderful nurses. But the problem is they, they get their certification and they have to move out of state because mm -hmm. they're finding it too difficult to find two physicians to get a collaborative, a collaborative agreement with to then start 
practicing. So uh, we, we need to stop exporting highly qualified and skilled individuals. Yes, and I'm not out to take a physician's job. I just want to contribute to the healthcare system and which is so valuable to these patients. We just need to do the right thing. I agree completely, yes. Well, again, Lynn, thank you so, so much. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your time. It was wonderful to meet you and <laughs> to too. talk with you. And I certainly hope that someday very, very soon I can invite you to the Capitol and take you around to the legislator's offices and you can tell your story face to face. Great. That would be great. great. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Mm -hmm.